From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. As always, I say we have a very exciting program for you. And uh, this first headline that I have really excites my own heart. I'm going to be asking Jack directly about it because it affects all of us, all of us. Take a look, if you will, at the Jerusalem Post. I in the sky. The Jerusalem Post joins the elite Skylark drone operators for a nighttime exercise. You know, they have really caught up uh, to everything going on with uh, science and what's going on in the sky and uh, the development of so many different things. Well, I want to take the first four words, I in the sky. Friends, you know, as I read that, I couldn't help but praise the Lord for what has been accomplished over in Israel and Jerusalem Post uh, came out with it. But I praise the Lord that we can keep our eye in the sky because I truly believe, honestly I do, that the Lord is coming back very, very soon in the rapture to take his children home. How wonderful that is. And I want to ask Jack if he agrees with that. Eye in the sky. Jack, should we be looking for that blessed hope? and the glorious appearing of the great God, our Savior. That, Christian, is a demand from our God. The Holy Spirit wrote that Bible from cover to cover. And these guys say, yeah, it'll never happen in my lifetime. You backslider, get right with God. And I told you and asked you Christians, please memorize this great verse. Do we look for his coming? looking for that blessed hope, the glorious appearing of the great God, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know when he comes, you're going to hear it in this first message. He comes and after all the signs are fulfilled, and by the way, in my prophecy Bible, there are 10,385 prophecy verses all fulfilled. Whoa. <laughs> and you know what you have to do? Great. When you read your Bible daily with your family, start at Genesis, and you'll come across all 10,385. I've got them coded. You see the coloring. You say, well, oh, that's a prophecy. And then it's got a letter at the side, and in the front I've got 135 pages that explain every prophecy. You don't need another Bible. You don't need books about the Bible. This Bible is it. I will also send with it the 804 verses that Jesus is the only way. Wow. And the 211 verses that there's a hell. Man, you, when you get my prophecy Bible, you got it from cover to cover. <laughs> I'm not ashamed to say it. <clears throat> I have more study in the Bible than any man alive today. And when that Holy Spirit came to me on August 13th, a year ago, half a year and a half ago, he said, you have been appointed by the Father and anointed by me because you know this Bible better than any other man. Preach it. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all us long-suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure doctrine, but they will seep to them teachers, the big names, because they want their ears tickled by these guys. You know that kind of serpent? Little Jack Horner sat in the corner eating his pumpkin pie. He stuck in his thumb and pulled out a plum and said, what a good boy am I. Oh I'm trying to get to heaven by my good works. Mm. Bunk. Get out of there and start preaching the word from cover to cover. The reason Rexel and I have seen seven million souls saved is because I never did anything but preach God's holy word. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. That's the only way to have victory. And then the Holy Spirit filling you 
Here's what you Christians need. Nothing else. You don't need all the books by all the best guys in the world. I read them. Most of them were error. I had to correct them. I debated them. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto oh, my Oh, yes. Path. So, 2 Timothy 4, 2, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season, when they like it, when they don't like it. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. And I'll tell you, you folks don't even know the difference. Did you ever hear these guys, 11 of them? The world's going to end. Bunk. I got a Bible that says it's a world without end. And what is that Lord's prayer about? Thy kingdom come. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory. Forever. 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 How long is forever? Amen. You 11 guys making a big money. I'm preaching a lie. Watch out. That's not the only lie. There's another lie. And there's 17 of the denominations in Protestantism today preaching it. Replacement theology. Mm. God is true with the Jew forever. There's only one guy I know who stands that way, and that's the devil. Satan stood right. against the Jew. And so are you. And if you belong to those churches of the Protestant faith, get out of them. And I say that as a guy who is a Protestant, but I'm getting sick of protesting. I mean it. I will protest the crowd I have to protest, and that's the Muslims who say that if you believe Jesus is the Son of God, you'll burn in hell forever. I protest that. And they say if you kill everybody, if you kill your daughter, if he has premarital sex, and if you kill your son because he's a homosexual, and if you kill anyone in our group who says that Allah is not our true God or Muhammad, our true prophet, kill him. And if you're not a Muslim, you kill everyone, and especially the Christians. 57 Muslim nations, and they say, Get it. If you do all this killing, you know what God's going to do for your reward? You go to heaven, he says, guess what? You could have 72 of them hmm. and have all the sex you want in heaven forever. What a message from hell. My. But I'm telling you, it's getting just as bad among the Protestants now. We're, next week, I'm going to tell you all the sins that they're committing. Hmm. Sex is rampant in every denomination today, in Catholicism and Protestantism. But it's right in Islam. It's wrong in the rest. When the judgment day comes, the Bible says, and this is talking about hell. Oh, I, you believe in hell? Yeah, Pope Francis doesn't. I do. God doesn't lie 211 times when he talks about hell in this yeah, book. No. What does it say? The fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable are going to be in hell. The abominable, the whoremongers, all those who commit all these vile sins with these women. Lost. You go to the massage parlors, you commit fornication as a young person sitting in the back seat of a car. You commit homosexuality, sin, sin, sin. Right now, the Methodist Church, and I preach for many of them, they were godly people. I'm talking about their preachers. Half of them are marked leaving now. Why? Because the Methodist Church took a stand, says we will not marry homosexuals, man with man, woman with woman. These guys said then we're leaving the ministry. Good! I'm not going to pull any punches. And I'm going to tell you something. When I was on in TV before, some of you guys were pulled my program when it was too strong. You do it now, I don't care. I've got everything in the world booked. I'm reaching 7 billion, 600 million a week, twice. I just told my agents, if they buck my program, you cancel them the next morning. 
I'll go to YouTube. YouTube lets me preach anything I want. I will not be silenced. I will stand in this book. When it mentions sin, I will name the sin. If I can't preach the Bible, I will get off your stations. I mean it. God has called me for this hour. I'm 88 years of age. I've signed up for three years. I'll be 91. Do you know I'm going to preach every prophecy, 10,385, in the next three years? Keep signing up. Keep mm -hmm. signing up. <clears throat> I love this book. Amen, Jack. Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. This sin business. Millions of you preachers are going to be lost forever. All the whoremongers are there. And I'm going to tell you next week all the places where it's going on. All right, Jack. Well, you know, a few minutes ago, he brought up something that uh, will lead us into this next part of our program talking about the Jews and the persecution of the Jews because Satan hates the Jewish people. Absolutely. Well, I'd like for you to see what's happening in the past and what's happening right now. Please take a look at this first one. 50 years ago, remembering the execution of Jews in Iraq. 50 years ago, oh my, they have been persecuted around the world, but they recently uh, celebrated the 40th anniversary of a peace treaty. Now that had to do with the Camp David Accord, and that was between Egypt and our wonderful Israel. And that, of course, the President Amor Sadat understood Israel uh, was exactly what the Lord wanted there. Praise the Lord for that wonderful peace treaty. Well, sorry to say, they're still being persecuted. Philadelphia, I mean, I can't believe this. The Jews are the vilest people. Are you kidding? God forgive oh. you, now, he Buster. Is a, he is of uh, Egyptian origin. Must Probably doesn't go along with Anwar Sadat at all. Anti-Semitic acts spreading like a poison in France. So sorry about that over in Europe, the anti-Semitism wake-up call. And that's exactly what we need to do to stop it. And uh, that's what's happening in Paris also. The president is saying we've got to stop the hate and the anti-Semitism. Thank you, Mr. President. Syria, Russia, and Iran condemn U.S. recognition of Israeli sovereignty over Golan. Well, there are three more countries that hate Israel. The persecution of China's Jews. I really was quite surprised at this article. The Chinese Jews have always had a good history, but now persecution. There are only 2,500 Jews believed to still remain in the entirety of China. All across, just 2,500 left there. Many have been killed. Many have been persecuted and many have just left. Now, Jack, I, I do find it very, very interesting and heartbreaking because some of the most brilliant men in the world are Jewish men. The scientists that have brought about wonderful scientific discoveries for all of us, they're God's chosen people. They're brilliant people. Why all the persecution? I have many Jewish friends. I love them. Thank God for them. And uh, I thank God that we've been there 10 times. We're able to interview some of the Jewish people that are uh, in government there, in the Knesset. Oh, how grateful I am for Israel. And that one day God's coming to defend Israel. Jack, why are they so hated right now? I don't understand it. That's very simple. First Chronicles 21.1. Satan stood against the Jew. And you know why the devil hates the Jew so much? Because God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit love the Jew. And my Easter message is going to prove it. Start telling everybody. You're going to hear an Easter message like you've never heard. The first week is what Christ did. Not this little stuff that if you do the best, you're going to, you don't get to heaven that way. He died 800 times. 
The Bible says Christ died for our sins 400 times and 408 times. It's through his blood. Amen. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's son, mm. cleanses from all sin. Any other way, you're lost forever. So I said, boy, you get excited. You better believe I get excited. I'm sick of the mealy mouth ministers have nothing to say anymore. And you give your tithes and offerings to them. God forgive you. If they're not winning souls, stand with the ministry that does. I am reaching 7 billion, 600 million with the potential to do it twice a week for the next three years. All right, let's go a little further. One of those messages is going to be God's love for the Jew. God said, Israel, when I first saw you, I didn't love you just because you were the most of people. You were the fewest. But oh, Israel, I loved you. And Israel, I'm going to give unto you an everlasting name. There's not a person or government or war that's ever going to get rid of you. I, God, will protect you to the end. In fact, we're going to set up the kingdom of heaven. We're going to move it to earth. And we're going to move it right to Jerusalem. Mm. You know what? We got a vice president named Pence. He spoke at that great place. It's the first time in history that the applause was so great, the greatest ovation in history to our vice president because he stuck up for them. I stick up for them. I'll pay any price to stand up for the people I love, for the Jew. I'm going to start. I just joined this great organization, 25 of them, I, Jews for Jesus. Amen. And I said, I'm going to send every convert I get your way. And I mean it. I love Israel. Mm. Well, you know, Jack, Israel's still in trouble. We all know that there are nations over there that really hate Israel still. And that there's going to be a great war. Jack has spoken about that coming. Well, some countries are really building up right now. Take a look at this. The new Beijing Moscow Axis. U.S. accuses Russia, China of undermining space peace push. How true. Russia is turning up the nuclear rhetoric. That's a problem, and it is a problem, believe me. Turkish-Russian military cooperation deepens amid U.S.-Turkish tensions. You know what? We're having our problems with Turkey, and uh, we've got to pay attention to that. Iranian commander, all of Israel within reach of Hezbollah's missiles. Well, they're threatening. We say now we can reach uh, Israel and no problem about it. Israel tells Hamas to rein in border violence or face major military action. Well, they're speaking up. We're not going to be pushed around. Israel is standing up to them. The Prime Minister Netanyahu warns Iran, attack Israel, and it will be the last anniversary you celebrate. Amen. Israel, Hamas reportedly agreed to cease fire after rockets fired at Tel Aviv. Well, they have to defend themselves. You fired at us, and we're not going to take it anymore. Now, could we be drawn into this? Yes, the United States could be drawn into yet another big war. It's coming. We, we are soon. Yes, we're standing with Israel. U.S. space to counter alleged hype supersonic weapons and threats say uh, Shanahan. Now, he is the acting defense secretary. Oh, my, oh, my. So much going on out there. Hypersonic weapons. I like this next one. Deterrence 101. You know, we used to hold back. For the last several years, Russia and China have lapped us in the arms race while we have been stuck at the starting block. Well, Deterrence, we are going to stand up for what is right, and we're going to say this is not right, what you are building up to do over in the Middle East. Well, praise the Lord that our country is standing and that we are the Christian country standing for what God stands for, Jack. I quote the verse I already used, Satan, that slimy devil, stood against the Jew. God loves the Jew. In the second week, Easter week, 
The whole program is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit's love for the Jew. Now, I said this, and I'm going to repeat it. They'll never be able to destroy Israel because I got a God whose word is true. I will give Israel an everlasting name. Amen. Now, 65 years ago, I started preaching the coming war with Russia. According to the Bible, I preached at 800 church crusades. I preached at 234. Four citywide crusades. I preached it in South America. I preached it in Europe. I preached it everywhere. Millions came to Christ. What was it about? The great northern confederacy comes against the Jew. It's going to be the greatest war in history. It is World War III. Who's involved? Russia leads it. When you come to that Bible and you come to the term Gog of Magog, and it says Rusia in the Greek, which is Russia, and it talks about in Ezekiel 38, Meshach and Tubal. Meshach was Moshach and then Muscovy, and now Moscow. Tobolsk is southwest of Siberia, but is a part of the Jews' country. And they're going to all come against them. It's going to be the greatest battle in history. 200 million are going to die. There's going to be a river of blood 200 miles long. It's going to take seven months to bury the dead. But Israel will survive. Amen. There are going to be millions of these guys who call themselves Muslims who kill everybody. Millions of them. Because all of our 57 nations are going to go along with them. Germany is going to, under the term Gomer, is going to join them. Tagarma, Turkey, is going to join them. The Muslim nations of the world, they, all these people who believe in other gods are going to be there. There are 1,800 different cults and 2,300 religions, all against the Holy Bible. They're going to hold the march. But God says Israel is going to win. Well, praise the Lord, Israel is going to win because she is God's chosen people, and that's where the Lord's coming back. But the Lord's coming in the rapture. It could be today. That's why we said keep your eye on the sky. But are you ready? What's in your life right now? What does the Bible mean to you? Is it just something that you leave, uh, take to church with you? Or do you apply it to your life? You can have victory over anything in your life if only you'll accept Christ as your personal Savior. This is why he came, was to die on the cross for you, to forgive your sins, cleanse you of anything in your life that you know shouldn't be there. Will you open your heart as Jack prays this wonderful prayer, accepting Jesus in your heart? Jack. Here's the proof you know the Lord. Are you living the life? If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All the old filthy things are passed away. Everything becomes new. If it didn't happen, you didn't get it. You get Jesus. You'll be different. Father, I talk the language, but I don't live the life. Jesus, today I believe in you, and I want a real experience. I ask you, you come into my heart, save me from all my past sin, and keep me from any sin in the future. The world is so full of sin and corruption. God, I want a holy life. I want you, Jesus. Save me now. Cleanse me. And I'm trusting you to do it through your blood. Now, come in, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Did you pray that prayer? You know, it's so wonderful to know that 
you're cleansed. You're God's child. You're ready for heaven. And if he comes in the rapture right now, you'll be taken. Oh, first steps in a new direction will be yours if you'll just write to me or call. I'd love to send it to you absolutely free. It's our gift. It will help you to grow in the Lord. First steps in a new direction. You don't have to go the old way. You can go new with him walking with you. Our mailing address is Jack Benaby Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. Remember to ask for your free copy of the booklet, First Steps, when you write. Now, I have uh, something that I kind of cherish. I had the joy of interviewing many, many people around the world, about 250 people. And uh, many of those were in Washington, D.C. In fact, Mrs. Barbara Bush is on here. That's our offer of the week, one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, now, of course, Mrs. Barbara Bush is with the Lord. I'm so grateful. But I also did many senators. Senator Charles Grassley, for one, who's very influential in Washington, D.C. right now. We need to be praying for all of our senators, praying for our president, and oh, certainly right. so, uh, asking the Lord to use their testimony there. Yes? He said, I'm so glad you and Jack are back on the air. The Senator of the United States. Thank you, Brother Grassley. Oh, yes, absolutely. And the first ambassador to... Uh, the United Nations, Abba Iban. So many interesting, interesting interviews. I'd like for you to please listen to our announcer in just a moment and get this right away. Hear what they have to say. It applies to our world right now. Here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck. Thank you, Rexella. Oh, my friend, to order. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free. 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now, once again, here's Rexella. Thank you so much, Chuck. Please order this. You know, there are a lot of other uh, people on here that are not in Washington, but my, oh, my, what a joy it was to interview them, and I trust that it will bless your heart to see their testimony. You know, friends, I want to leave you with this wonderful, wonderful thought. I love a thought at the end of our program each week. When Christ rules the heart, peace reigns supreme. Oh, my, how true that is. Let him rule your heart. We we'll look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, always remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye. The preceding program was sponsored by the partners of Jack Vanapie Ministries.